Good day everyone. This is going to be a tutorial of how to do the Lost Lake Triangulation assignment for my second year environmental science students. You are going to need a piece of paper or eight. <laughs> it's easiest if you can get paper that has lines on it. A piece of graph paper would work well. You want the lines to show you where the north-south direction is. So I've taken just a normal lined piece of paper and put it on its side so that I can have north facing up. You're also going to need a 360 degree measurement tool. So this can be an actual compass. It can be a old school protractor. You can use this. I'm going to send this 360 protractor to you guys to print. You can cut it out. You need to have a hole in the center. If you are able to, it's really handy to print it out on laminate so you can see through, that's always nice. And then you're also gonna need some kind of ruler. This is the only ruler I could find in my house. It goes with the protractor kit, but it'll do. So on this assignment, I'm probably gonna use all of these tools in some way to show you the different ways. There is this lake that a human has sketched out. The person who sketched it out had a fishing spot and they didn't want to mark their secret spot with any kind of water boy or something. So they measured the distance, the length of the dock and the distance to the stream. And with two distances and three points, you can then triangulate where all the other points around the lake are. And he made a accurate map of the lake and was able to put his secret spot where, or her secret spot out of the way. So we're gonna recreate this map. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna start here at point A. Now on his sketch, he's got a map that is long, taller than it is wide. So realistically, I'd want my sheet of paper the other way, but I'm going to start here and just put a, a little bit in, in kind of the middle. I'm doing this upside down, so bear with me if things look weird. I want these lines to be facing north. Uh, I hope that N is right. I think that N is upside down. So it says here, to go from A to B, so to go down the dock, we need to go 290 degrees. So if I put the middle of my compass on the A, it's 360 degrees, right? So west is 270, 290 is here. But how am I gonna write that down? How I do that is with a piece of paper, and I've got this really bright paper. So I'm going to line that up with A and then put that on the top and I'm gonna to have to lean over here. So now I have my zero middle of my compass on my A. I have the lines of my compass lined up with the lines of the page so that the the north on the compass is facing the north of my page and I now have this particular line here is on that 290 so I can trace this whole line and I can take my compass away and continue tracing this line this is 290 degrees so I'm going to write this arrow is 2b I have no idea which way B goes. I think it goes this way. <laughs> and my instructions tell me that it is 80 meters. So now I have to figure out what I want to be my scale. So if I make one centimeter equal one meter, which would be easy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One centimeter equals one meter, then B is here. That feels like it's going to be too big. Based on this drawing here, the lake looks like it is at least three or four times wider than 
the dock. I don't think this is going to be big. So I'm going to start with something much, 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 much smaller. And maybe I'll going to do, like, I kind of want it to be like two centimeters long, I think is going to be a more accurate. If I put B here, is that going to be too small then? Maybe we can do half. This might work. Try here. If we make this B, that's four centimeters, which means one centimeter equals 20 meters. So I'm going to write that down down here. One, oh, I'm hoping I'm doing this right. One centimeter equals 20 meters. <laughs> So there's my scale. So next up, I have A to C. So now I've got one angle, I need to make a second one. So this time I'm going to use the old school protractor and see if I can make that work. So with the this protractor, again, I'm putting the center of the protractor on the A point and I'm lining up the 0, 180 with my north-south line because zero is north, 180 is south. And this is 20 degrees. So that 20 degrees is here. And I can do the same thing with that piece of paper underneath, but because I could actually see the line on this one, I can now take that away and trace my line. Oh, I'm off by a little bit. This is the sort of activity where if you are off by a tiny bit, you can really get your results wrong. So that's my line, my 20 degree line. If you had the other way around, you'd have to do a little bit of math. So this one, if I had for the first 180, it's easy. But if I had to do a lower one, I'd have to then add right, and keep going this direction. So 180 plus 40, 180 plus 90 to do the other half of the circle. It takes a little bit more math. Okay, we have A to C is 120 meters. So we said that each centimeter equals 20 meters, which means when we did 80 meters, we only went four centimeters. So if we're doing a 120 meters, we're only going to go six centimeters. So here's C. Now with my A, B, and C, I'm hoping I have room for the rest of my map on here. I might have to start again with my point A slightly different, but we're going to keep moving on to different points. So the next point here, A to D is 3.5. So D is this top corner. We'll see if that fits on our page. So let's try it with this one. I'm trying to find zero on here. Here, zero, 360. That's north. So putting this dot on the A and lining up zero and I put A right on one of these lines so that I knew that I could always line up three zero one eighty on that line. So that's my point and you can see that the 20 lines up really well and the 290 lines up so so far so good in terms of making this work. This time I need to do 3.5 degrees, so 10, 5, so 360 to 10, this means we have one tick per degree. 1, 2, 3 and a half is here. So then I can take this away, I can use my piece of paper again. And 
because now I'm starting to get a lot of lines, I'm going to label this line D, A to D. So that I know later when I have a thousand lines which line I'm looking at. So somewhere along that line is the D point, but we need a second one to triangulate. So we need B or C to D. And because the dock was easier, most of the points are A and B, and then once in a while they've used C as a secondary point. So we're trying to find D. B to D is 30 degrees. So using the same one, I put that on my dot and find the 0, 360 point for north. Now B isn't on one of those lines, so it's a little harder to line it up north-south perfectly. And then 30 degrees, 10, 20, 30 is there. I'm going to use this piece of card this time because it's less tedious than that piece of paper. And this is just a birthday card someone sent me. And this one is B to D, so I'm going to label that too. B D. So where A D and B D meet, this is actually point D. So now we have A, B, C, and D. So we've got A, B, C, and D. That looks pretty good so far in terms of the sketch. So let's do, actually let's do G because it'll show you how um, A and B and C work. So from E, if E is somewhere around here, B, A, and C all reach E really well, but G is sort of across the way. So A and B are going to be really similar. So we might have to use C to get that triangulation better. So I'm going to look on the map here to G. They've only given us two points to G. We've got B to G and C to G. So B to G is 290. Seriously, B to G is 290? That's our same line. So we don't need a new line. We've already got that one. Nice. And C to G is 292. So we put this on the C. And line up our 360. C to G is 2, oh, it's 262. I'm upside down. 262. 1, 2, that point there. So here is where point G is. So you would do that for all the points. So for the assignment, I want all the points on the map. Once you have all those points, you are going to show me that you did it right by doing a little bit of work here. It says here, use A and B to map out the whole map to determine the width of the lake. So once you've mapped this out, realistically, this should be accurate. Those angles that are on this page should be the same angles that are in real life, just following them further. So these numbers should translate to real world based on our scale. So if we determine the width of the lake, A to G, and the distance from the dock to the boy, B to F, so let's just do A to G to show you guys how. If we find out the distance from A to G, which is on that 290 line, now my ruler only goes to 10. So that's 10 plus another 12, or another 11. So I've got 11.2. So A to G is 11.2 centimeters. So what does that mean in terms of 
how far it is. Well, if 11.2 centimeters and one centimeter equals 20 meters, the width of the actual lake should be what? Right? I don't want to tell you the answers, but you guys can figure this out. And then you're going to also find the boy that's marked here somewhere, because G is here, F is somewhere here, and you're going to find where that boy is and write, I think it's B to F. Yeah, B to F. And what centimeters that is and what meters that is. And then you are going to make your own mystery point and give me the degrees to it. So say your mystery point is here. You have to mark it on your map so that I know that that's your mystery point. Your secret spot, you could write it, is point J. Then you need to find your own measurements. So if I put this on A, oh, I put it too close. Let's try a different spot. Let's make it further away. The new spot, J. And I'd erase that, but I don't want to waste time right now. Have you watch me erase things. So line up my grid. And then I'm going to put this from A to J. that is, and I drew on here, is 24, 244. So then A to J equals, oh, 244, okay, there, two, I'm trying to do things upside down. 44 degrees. And then I need to do it from a second point as well. So I could do from B, B to J. How many degrees? And then I can double check that your J is actually those degrees. And I'll double check that most of these points are okay and that these measurements are right. Usually when people mess up here, it's because they haven't been super accurate with where their north is each time. That their dot is a little bit too big and they're moving around too much. Or um, they've shifted accidentally as they move around so that this point is slightly shifted. And as each point, if one of these three original points are shifted, then all your points will be wonky. This is how humans mapped all their countries before we had satellites. We put, physically put these points on the earth. There are cement and metal markers all over Europe and North America that we have used to triangulate the distances in real world time and space. Good luck.